when you think of Australia's natural world. What comes to mind? Maybe a six meter saltwater crocodile silently gliding out of the water, lying right in front of your house at dawn. Or a harmless looking bush where one of the deadliest snakes on earth waits for that split second when you let your guard down. All of it can be summed up in one word, danger. But what if I told you that this world was once far more brutal? That 50,000 years ago, the creatures here were 10 times larger, faster, and hungrier than anything alive today. Prehistoric Australia was not just a chapter in evolution. It was a living nightmare, the thawn that once ruled this planet. Today, Australia seems peaceful, with endless beaches, eucalyptus forests swaying in the wind, and golden plains blazing under the sun. But hidden beneath that beauty lies another world, a world where one small mistake could cost you your life. Nowhere else on Earth gathers as many deadly creatures as here. From oceans, swamps, to arid deserts, Australia is like a natural laboratory built for beings with venom, claws, and the harshest survival instincts. Starting from the ground, this is home to 20 of the 25 most venomous snakes on the planet, Every step on the grass could be a game of life and death. One small bite, and within minutes, your heart stops. The inland taipan, also known as the fierce snake, carries enough venom to kill dozens of people with a single strike. And the most terrifying thing is, it lives right in the heart of Australia where people go about their daily lives. But snakes aren't all. In the northern rainforests, the cassowary, a flightless bird with legs like weapons will charge at humans if threatened. One kick can rip open a person's chest. Sometimes it does and kills. People call it the dinosaur bird because looking at the cassowary, you can glimpse the prehistoric past when creatures like Velociraptor once roamed. Out at sea, Australia becomes even more dangerous. In the crystal clear waters off Queensland, the box jellyfish a creature that seems fragile kills more people than any shark. Just a few tentacles brushing against the skin brings searing acid-like pain, and the victim may collapse before a cry for help escapes their lips. A bit farther, the great white shark, the symbol of oceanic fear, glides silently beneath the waves where humans are nothing more than intruders in its hunting ground. And on land, the saltwater crocodile, a survivor from the age of dinosaurs, still rules the northern swamps. Over six meters long, weighing a ton, it can launch out of the water in a flash, clamping down on prey with a bite stronger than any creature ever measured. To it, humans are just moving snacks that show up at the right time. Even the tiniest creatures here are far from harmless. Funnel web spiders around Sydney have venom that can stop a human heart in minutes. And the Jimpy Jimpy plant, just brushing against its leaves, burns like fire and the pain can last for weeks. Nature in Australia is terrifying not only because of its creatures, but because of the environment itself. This is where three of the largest wildfires of the 21st century occurred, burning millions of hectares and killing over a billion animals. In moments, the sky turned into a sea of fire and life was wiped away as if it had never existed. Modern Australia is a vivid paradox, both paradise and hell. A place where life endures not by avoiding danger, but by confronting it. Nature in today's Australia is already fierce, but its prehistoric past was a true nightmare. As the dust of the present fades away, imagine standing on that same land 50,000 years ago, no cities, no roads, no human voices. Only wind whistling across barren plains and the heavy footsteps of giant beasts ruling this place. It was the Pleistocene Epoch, a violent chapter in Earth's history lasting from over 2 million years ago to around 11,700 years ago. Across the planet, ice covered the poles. Glaciers advanced and retreated like the Earth's own breath. But in the Southern Hemisphere, especially in Australia, the world looked different dry, scorching, and filled with giants. Back then, Australia wasn't the land of small kangaroos or lazy koalas. It was the kingdom of giants, where nature pushed every boundary of life to its limits. 
Ancient eucalyptus forests stretched to the horizon, where marsupials the size of cars grazed by the lakeshore. In the distance, huge shadows moved slowly, shaking the ground beneath them. Above, the sky was darkened by enormous flightless birds, whose footsteps thundered like drums. In a small corner of that world, the first humans of Australia appeared. They were the ancestors of the Aboriginal people, the first to leave Africa and cross the seas to this isolated land. No houses, no metal, no modern weapons. They had only stone, fire, and intelligence. Compared to the beasts around them, humans were out of place. A small group moving across the plains, carrying fire to ward off predators. While around them, creatures tens of times their size lurked, armed with claws and teeth like knives. At that time, we were not rulers, but prey, learning to survive. The air was thick with dryness. Rainy seasons were short, the dry seasons endless. The vast lakes that once sustained life slowly shrank leaving cracked ground like snakeskin. And in that harsh environment, the planet's largest animals evolved, becoming true survival machines. Some had skin thick as steel, others jaws strong enough to crush bone, or venom powerful enough to kill anything that came close. Human life back then was nothing short of a survival game. They could die at any moment. The landscape of Australia 50,000 years ago looked unlike anywhere else on Earth. Not lush forests, not endless grasslands, but a half-arid, half-wooded land where light and shadow merged. Salt lakes shimmered among red earth plains, reflecting a blazing sky. This was the stage of the last giants, the creatures that ruled before humans took control. They were massive, strange, and at times terrifying beyond imagination. Millions of years before humans arrived, a colossal shadow moved silently through the dense forests of New South Wales. The fossil paleontologists found was only a fragment of an arm bone, yet it stunned science. Proof that Australia once had giant carnivorous dinosaurs. They named it Rapator, the thief. A theropod nearly nine meters long, as tall as a room with teeth like knives and claws strong enough to tear through flesh and bone. Though its origins remain mysterious, many researchers believe Rapator was one of the last predators of the Cretaceous in Australia a distant cousin of Tyrannosaurus. Imagine standing in a damp forest, hearing the wind rustle through leaves. Suddenly everything falls silent. No birds, no insects. Then from the darkness, a pair of golden eyes gleams. Rapator has found its prey, a flash of movement, and within seconds, life ends in a low, thunderous roar echoing through the forest. While predators ruled the woods, the plains belonged to gentler giants. Across ancient Australia's dry lowlands walked a slow-moving giant, leaving footprints deep as ponds. It was Diprotodon, the largest marsupial ever to exist. A distant relative of today's koalas and wombats, but incomparable in size. Nearly two meters tall, over four meters long, weighing up to three tons. An adult Diprotodon was as big as a small truck. They lived in herds migrating with the seasons in search of grass and leaves. Their large, flat teeth were built to grind tough plants. But size was not always an advantage. As the climate grew drier, water sources vanished and great predators, including humans, appeared. Diprotodon became easy prey. Their fossils are often found near ancient waterholes, perhaps the sites of the first organized hunts by humans in Australia. Gentle, slow-moving creatures, defeated not by claws, but by intellect. If Diprotodon embodied peace, then Thylacolio carnifex, the marsupial lion dodo, was the nightmare of the prehistoric plains. This was the largest carnivorous marsupial ever to live on the continent, and one of the most specialized predators known. With jaws stronger than a lion's and blade-like teeth, Thylacolio could crush bone with a single bite. It wasn't a cat, but it moved with feline grace and silence. Its massive front claws could open and close, a perfect hunting mechanism, rare among marsupials. Scientists believe Thylacolio could ambush from trees dropping onto prey, driving its claws into their backs and ending it with a bite to the throat. Fossils with scratch marks on cave walls show it used caves as dens for shelter and raising young. Some caves in southern Australia still bear sharp claw marks. 
reminders of a predator that early humans once lived alongside. To them, Thylacolia was more than an animal. It was the embodiment of primal fear, the shadow that leapt from above, the reason fire and stone spears became humanity's first survival tools here. Not far from where Deprotodon wandered, in the swampy lowlands of the east, another giant marsupial reigned, Zygomaturus. As big as a buffalo, nearly a ton in weight, with a massive head and crushing molars for breaking tough vegetation. Not fast, not aggressive, but perfect prey for larger predators. Once attacked, it stood little chance. But as the land dried and the swamps disappeared, so did Zygomaturus. It was proof of the fragility of giants. No matter how huge, they could not resist time and climate. If you think today's saltwater crocodiles are terrifying, Quincana will change your mind. This ancient crocodile could hunt on land and may have rivaled Megalania and Thylacolio as an apex predator. Unlike modern crocs, Quincana had long legs, a higher stance, and a tall skull with serrated teeth like knives. Not for dragging prey into water, but for tearing flesh on land. Fossil traces show it once roamed rivers and wetlands of northern Australia. It could reach seven meters long, weigh a ton, and move surprisingly fast thanks to its elevated body. Needing no water to hide, Quincana waited in the undergrowth, then lunged out, clamping the victim's leg or neck with a fatal bite. With saw-edged teeth and tremendous power, one strike was enough to bring prey down. And in Aboriginal folklore, there are still tales of the walking crocodile. A creature lurking in the forests, walking on four long legs and laughing when it rains. Perhaps just a legend, or a distant memory of Quincana. On land, nothing compared to Megalania, the largest lizard ever known, over seven meters long, weighing more than a ton. Megalania was like a supersized Komodo dragon, but faster, stronger, and far deadlier. It hunted everything, marsupials, reptiles, even early humans, with serrated teeth and saliva full of necrotic bacteria. One bite was enough to kill from shock or infection. Scientists believe it may have had mild venom glands like modern monitor lizards, making its wounds lethal within minutes. Imagine a beast as long as a bus bursting from the bushes, claws scraping rock, jaws opening to reveal curved, blade-like teeth. That was the life and death moment faced by early humans. Astonishingly, Megalania survived late into history, perhaps only going extinct around 40,000 years ago when humans were already in Australia. That means humans and Megalania truly met. Maybe the aboriginal tales of giant dragons were memories of this creature. And then there was one that even other predators feared. Wanambi, a giant non-venomous snake up to six meters long. It didn't need venom, it only needed patience. In cool caves or by lake shores, Wanambi lay coiled and motionless for hours, even days. Only when prey, an ancient kangaroo or even a human Xanun, came to drink, the massive body would spring to life, wrapping tight and squeezing until the heart stopped. Wanambi was the embodiment of silent death. No roar, no trace, only a swift, certain end. Seeing its long fossilized skeleton today, one understands. Sometimes the scariest thing is not the fastest hunter, but the one that waits. Across the plains, instead of ostriches or emus, there once lived Genjornis Newtoni a giant bird nearly two meters tall, weighing over 200 kilograms. It couldn't fly, but its powerful legs let it run fast, and its thick hammer-like beak could crush bones or hard fruit. People believe that when a whole flock of Genjornis moved, the ground shook. Thunder rolled, giving rise to the name Thunderbird. Burned eggshells show that humans collected and ate their eggs, helping drive them extinct around 45,000 years ago. Perhaps when the first humans cracked open that egg over a campfire, they didn't realize they had ended an era of giants. In a world where multi-ton beasts roamed the land, there was one small, fragile creature that seemed to have no chance. No claws, no speed, no armor or venom. And yet that creature, Homo sapiens modern humans, and was the only one to outlive every prehistoric monster of Australia. About 50,000 years ago, the first humans set foot on the continent, likely from the islands of Southeast Asia. 
They were Aboriginal people carrying stone tools, fire, and basic hunting skills. At that time, Australia teamed with Megafauna, Megalania, Thylacolio, Diprotodon, Quincana, and humans, barely 1.7 meters tall, stood amid that food chain as a system error. Weaker than all others, yet holding a weapon none had, intelligence. Archaeological evidence shows humans hunted megafauna on a massive scale. At Cuddy Springs in New South Wales, diprotodon fossils were found mixed with stone tools and clean-cut marks, signs of deliberate butchering. Burned bones from Lake Calabana and Naracourt Caves reveal that ancient humans used fire to trap and kill large animals. Much like modern Aboriginal controlled burns, and within a few thousand years, over 90% of Australia's megafauna vanished. Scientists debated what killed these giants, climate or humans. Geological evidence shows Australia grew drier, but not enough for mass extinction. Yet when comparing timelines, the die-offs happened right after humans arrived. That led many researchers to believe humans were the continent's first super predator. They knew how to cooperate, how to wait for the wind to change to drive prey, how to use fire, lay traps, and study behavior. While Megalania ambushed from the bushes, humans learned to ambush the ambusher. And with those tactics, they slowly conquered the land, turning the wild into their home. During this period, Australia's first art was born, the rock paintings in Kakadu and Arnhem Land, depicting the great beasts that no longer exist, giant marsupials, thunderbirds, giant lizards. It wasn't just art, it was survival memory, the stories of those who faced nightmares and prevailed. And then evolution's paradox appeared. While the strongest and largest vanished, the weakest rose to dominate. From a species that only ran, humans became the ultimate hunter. The only creature without fangs or claws, yet capable of erasing all others from its path. Today, when we look at Australia, a land of burning sun, blue seas, and strange creatures, it's hard to imagine it was once a battlefield of giants. But now, it's only fossils. A chapter of life closed, not by catastrophe, but by the hands of humans. Humans were neither the strongest nor the fastest, but through intellect and adaptation, they overcame everything. And in a cruel twist, that same gift made them the most dangerous species ever to exist on this planet. Today, the world is still changing, but this time not from ice or disaster. It's from us. As forests burn, oceans heat, and species vanish day by day, history repeats. Except this time, we are no longer the weak ones. We are the rulers. And sometimes that makes us the planet's new nightmare. Yet within that harsh truth lies hope because humans are also the only species that can choose. We can destroy, but we can also protect. We can ruin, but we can also save what remains. If we are brave enough to learn from the past, the fossils buried deep in Australia's red rock don't just tell of extinction, but serve as a warning. If we don't respect nature, we may be the next to disappear. So when looking back at this journey of tens of thousands of years, from the age of giants to today's world, the final question isn't, how did we survive? But rather, do we deserve to keep existing? If this story made you see the world differently, take a moment to hit like, subscribe, and share this video. Thank you for watching until the end. See you again in the next one.